We've got a new lens. Let's try it out. My name is David Patton. When I started photography, I wanted to make art. But with bills to pay and a family to feed, I decided it would be better to be a working photographer than a starving artist. So I took a job as a photojournalist. 25 years and thousands of assignments later, it was time to go back to my first love. Come along as I follow my passion trying to create art that shows the essence of nature in a photograph. I'll be sharing my successes and my failures in hopes to inspire and educate. This is my journey. This is Riding the Edge. I'm revisiting a few locations that I've photographed in the past with different lenses. I only have about an hour this morning, so I'm so, I'm so anxious to use this lens. So <laughs> excited to get back out here that I'm just gonna make a few quick shots and then, and then we'll uh, have to head home. Just love the way the, the light's filtering through the trees on this foggy morning. A little bit of mist through here. I don't know if it's going to show up. It's a good morning to be out. I wish I had more time though. And the lens that I bought is a 28 millimeter. This one happens to be the Nikon 28 1.8 G lens. It's their newest 28 before they went to the Z mount. It's a fairly modern lens and it's kind of expensive for, for what it is. But I felt like if I was gonna buy something, I wanted something that would be able to just go with me for a while. So if I, put a, if I did go mirrorless, I could put an adapter on this and use it. What I'm doing is I'm gonna be using just this lens for a while. I wanna to get to know this focal length again I started my photography career with 28 millimeter. That was 30 plus years ago. This was the first wide angle focal length that I went with. And I used that only as my wide angle lens for probably about six years. For the past five years, I've used only one wide angle lens for 35 millimeter. And that was a 20 millimeter. When I left journalism, I left the wide angle zooms behind. Wanted to try something different. Wanted to go back to working the way I used to when I first started. And that was with a prime lens. And I thought the 20 was all I needed. And if you follow this channel at all, if you've seen any of my videos, you may have heard me say that I wish I had something between 20 and 50. I just felt like there was just a little bit too big a jump. And there are times where I'm in the woods especially that the 20 is just a little too wide. And I'm hoping this 28 millimeter kind of fits that role, becomes my go-to woods lens when I want something wide. It's a wide angle lens, but it's not real wide. <laughs> As it usually is with me and my budget, to make room in my budget for this lens, I had to give up something. I had to sell a piece of gear. That's the only way I could afford this lens was to sell something photography related. It always hurts to give up something. If I didn't feel like this was an important piece of my vision, of my creativity, I probably wouldn't have been willing to give up what I did give up to get this lens. So it's got some big shoes to fill. <laughs> Now, I didn't, I didn't give up a lens. I, I did give up something else, though, that was kind of dear to my heart. But glass comes first. So. 
uh, one of those times where you you're not uh, photographing beauty. You're this is more of a documentary type shot. The uh, ugliness, the stupidity of man. Yeah, right here. This uh, little bit, patch of grass growing out of this old dilapidated stunt caught my attention. I was shooting it as a part of the landscape and then I noticed this poking out. It just seemed like an interesting piece of contrast. The side light. And I'm always attracted to subjects that are trying to make a living. <laughs> that little patch of grass is, is, is making a living right here on this dead, old, ancient tree stump. And I find that appealing. Something nice about this lens is it focuses really close. So it's allowing me to get some nice close-up shots, making this a really versatile lens for just about any kind of photography. If you look real close, there's little drops of dew on the outside edges of these plants. It's, it's kind of cool. Not a lot of tonal range difference here, but it is kind of a cool repeating shape and pattern. Why this 28 millimeter? Why this version? <laughs> As I stated before, I started out with a 28 millimeter when I started journalism. What I did not know when I started with that 28 millimeter lens many years ago was it was one of the worst versions of the 28 millimeter Nikon has produced. <laughs> well, at least according to the internet. Honestly, it served me well for about six years. I made some decent shots with it. I don't have any complaints. But now I can do some research. And I've, looking at the lenses out there, there still isn't a lot of great 28 millimeters from Nikon. You have to go back to the manual focus lenses to get well regarded 28s. And I decided I wanted something that fit in my lens lineup seamlessly. I already have three other AFS G lenses from Nikon. So I had a really good idea what th this lens is capable of. I have no complaints with any of my other lenses. I think that because this lens and most of the other ones that I have are... Uh, aren't metal construction that turns people off and they they think they, they feel cheap and they're not durable I picked it because of that <laughs> I like the lightweight nature of this lens and I also like that it has a built-in autofocus motor now I don't really know what other manufacturers do when it comes to autofocus but something that Nikon has implemented is the ability to manual focus even though it's on autofocus. You can fine-tune focus while you're shooting 
whether it's not out of focus or not. And as as I uh, use these lenses also in journalism, I found that to be a very useful tool. So that's how I'm used to shooting. When I shoot handhold, I'm always fine-tuning the focus point. Now I'll probably still manual focus most of the time. I, I, that's just what I usually do with, especially with wide-angle lenses. But it's nice to have the ability to go out of focus if you need to. And this does manual focus pretty nice. It's the manual focus ring is very dampered. Not as smooth as a manual focus lens, but very functional. This lens fits well with the other lenses in my uh, arsenal. When I pick it up and use it, it feels very familiar. So I thought before I finish this video, I would try this lens on a crop sensor camera. That gives this camera with this lens the equivalent of a 40, 42 millimeter, I believe. Basically a normal lens. Just to find out if this is a lens I want to use with this size sensor. The normal focal length can be pretty useful at times. I mean that this is such a light lens, it hardly feels like there's anything here around my neck. Well, I only got a couple shots, but I got enough to know that this lens on this camera body works really well together. Something I'll probably do a lot more in the future. And if you can't tell, I'm quite pleased with this purchase. This is probably going to be my default lens on no matter what camera I'm using. So I think we're going to end this video right here. Let me get home and do some editing. Until next time. Thanks for coming along for the ride.